here's my new video so please do like and subscribe to my channel and also click the alert button so you can see whenever I do add any new videos thank you for watching and enjoy hi everybody and welcome to interview number six of my believe to succeed series and today I am joined by the wonderful Mary Curtis thank you a bit of an introduction to yourself Oh my goodness, you dropped me then into it. I thought you were going to introduce me. Oh. What do you want me to say? Just as who you are, a bit about yourself, what you do. <sighs> That's a million dollar question. <laughs> I do lots of things. I fix people. I put them back together again. You fix people, which is I why do I wanted people. to do this. Yeah, I treat PTSD, uh, abuse cases, uh, many, many things really in, in, you know, there's no average day because every day is different. Yeah. So I'm an author and a speaker, hypnotherapist, psychotherapist, psychic, counselor, <laughs> healer, teacher, homeopath, Reiki oh, oh, master. Reiki master. Yeah. I yeah. usually <laughs> forget to mention. <laughs> exactly. That's it. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. When you, I think when you, you know, when you have a passion for what you do, you just lose the labels. Yeah. You, know, you just become, I don't know, it just becomes a part of you, you know, and sometimes people just ring me up and they'll just say, Mary, just fix me. And it's like, okay, because yeah. people are just paying for your time. So sometimes I use a little bit of this and a little bit of that and different techniques, because when you pull it all together, you know, you get a result. Um, and obviously it helps because I can see energy fields and see the chakras and see where the energy is blocked. Yeah. Um, but um, yeah, I've done it for a long time. Love what I do, yeah. get good results. 14 failures in inverted commas in, in about 20, 21 years. So wow. yeah. That's just amazing. And it, it, it's strange that you say failures there because like, I think- Just a work in progress. Do, isn't it? Yeah, mm. and what you do, I don't, it's, like you're teaching people how to help themselves and I can speak mm -hmm. from experience so like I, I mean the first time I saw you was I think I was about 20 so mm -hmm. many years ago <laughs> mm -hmm. and I had a reading with you and then it was last year I think that um yeah it was last I think May last year that uh, with yeah, yeah, that's yeah, when, yeah. Um, I had another reading with you and um and that's where it, our journey sort of really took off um, of me getting to know you and I know how much you've helped me personally um, you. through the Reiki uh, one and Reiki two with you um, and you also gave me um, a bit of hypnotherapy which is something that's really helped me uh, massively really sort of step away from some blocks that I was having but I'm not going to go into that because this is about you today mm -hmm. uh, but I just wanted to sort of highlight how much you do help people and mm -hmm. you me is how to help myself and that's that's the big thing for me because like, mm. anybody could spend the time and, and try mm. anybody but if you're not there willing to help yourself at the same time then yeah. it's not going to work no um, it's not it's not there is i think the slight feedback on your side lizzie i know we've we've already had a technical issue tonight i don't know does it feel fine i can hear it on this side do i feel fine to you yeah yeah I don't okay. know well anything. maybe it's going to record right okay sorry um <laughs> Yeah, it's interesting what you said, because, you know, many years ago, I used to play the victim. Um, I used to think, oh, poor little me, you know, here I am, divorced with four children, a husband that doesn't pay maintenance, a husband that doesn't see the children, and I'm knackered, and I'm running around on the hamster wheel and meeting myself coming backwards and, you know, working five days a week, if not six, and then just starting all over again on the Monday and just trying to make some sense of the weekend doing all the housework shopping washing cooking ironing cleaning and you know Sunday you take the kids out on the beach or wherever you're taking them up Rivington or something and at the back of your mind you know that you're going to start right on that treadmill again yeah. and um, you know at the end of the day it was never about um, I don't know it's about making that change for me you know I just knew I couldn't work in the civil service anymore yeah. it was killing me it was killing my soul completely um I was exhausted all the time and I really had no concept of me I was just the I don't know cleaner the mother the you know when I was married I was the wife you you always carry a label you've no awareness of your personal identification and 
you know, I remember the first time um, I decided to make the change and I went to Connections, the careers advice service, in, in the hope that I would get some kind of career outside of the civil service. And we discussed so much and, you know, she said, well, I think if you go back to college, even though you've got obviously a lot of qualifications already, if you go back, they can then see that you're determined and, and committed to what you're doing. And when I went back, I met a guy who'd had Reiki, he'd been an alcoholic for years and he'd had Reiki and it had changed his life. I didn't know what Reiki was. And at the time, I didn't know I was a natural healer. I'd just always done healing. But to me, I would have just said, you know, I was balancing energy. And... Um, this wonderful man introduced me to a lady called Trisha, who then introduced me to a group of people that were doing Tai Chi. And that's where I met Diane Mother, who eventually would become my teacher for Reiki. But all I knew at the time was I'd kind of followed that path because I couldn't carry on carrying on. Yeah. And I think, you know, Tony, um, I was going to say Tony Hogan then, Tony Robbins has that wonderful saying, you know, change, transformation will only come through desperation yeah. or the wisdom of knowing that you have to change and I was desperate you know I was heading for a breakdown I would never have admitted that yeah. I was fine you know yeah. I'm fine I'm fine I'm strong on this you know and I was crumbling you know and and I just couldn't admit that I couldn't the the, the fear of taking that mask off and being vulnerable and thinking well if I crack that's four children down the you know, down the drain as well. And what will happen to them? You know, will they go in an orphanage? Will they be separated? You know, I have to keep going, I have to keep going. And, and the pressure that was on me and the over-responsibility. And, and you know, when you have no awareness of yourself, it's a really scary place. I mean, yeah. when I look back, if I'd have known then what I know now, but if I had, things would have been different. And, and yeah. you have to, you have to understand that, you know, everything is a life lesson. Sometimes mm -hmm. we go through broken relationships and it's what did we learn from that um every one of us uh, over a certain age you know and I am 21 yeah um, of course every, every one of us <laughs> <laughs> you know every one of us has skeletons in the cupboard or regrets or could have would have should have and I, I think for me it's about making peace with yourself yeah and you know accepting yourself what's and all because we've all got warts in some way shape or form yeah. you know and I think the more peace you can make with yourself the more peace you can make with the world and of course we all want world peace I hope there's nobody on here who doesn't want world peace but you know what at the end of the day it starts with you absolutely it start with anyone else and um when we realize that we have the power to make peace with ourselves that's when life changes and I think you know it was my journey uh, to be in the civil service to find a job that wasn't long term for me you know it was yeah. it was fine in the beginning um but of course I began to outgrow it and I just had to listen to the nudges of the universe to move forward with that yeah. and I'd, I'd kind of screamed at the universe this before I knew about positive mental attitude and law of attraction and just said I can't carry on with this life it's driving me insane mm. and you know, obviously that set in motion the wheels for the universe to create the change. And I think one of the things about being British is we don't recognize anger. No. You know, we don't honor our anger. And that doesn't mean we have to go around clubbing somebody with a frying <laughs> pan or a rolling pin, but we're allowed to be angry. You know, yeah. uh, we're allowed to say, well, actually, life isn't working for me at the moment. I'm angry. And then it's kind of like, right, I'm angry. Right, I'm angry. Right. I'm actually going to do something about it. I'm not going to whinge anymore. I am going to be dynamic. I am going to take action and enough is enough because I always remember a very, very dear friend of mine saying to me years ago, she was a counselor and she said, you know, some people make a decision not to make a decision. In other words, they carry on carrying on. And I could have done that. You know, you work in the civil service, you get a good pension, you get the holidays, you get everything else. And I just thought, I can't do this, it's killing me, you know. And for me, I remember my friend Brian, um, he said to me years ago, you know, Mary, you have passion for your children and passion for your grandchildren, passion in your work, passion when you do workshops, passion for your books. He said, you are passionate in every aspect of your life. And that was the journey to find that passion. Because I think 
we come in as a child, if you look at children, they are passionate in everything. Yeah. You know, whether they're colouring, whether they're playing with the football on the park, whether they're laughing and giggling, you know, being on the swings. And my granddaughters teach me so much. And we lose our innocence with a patriarchal system, you know, academia. We have to be blonde, blue eyed, nice figure, conformist, don't argue, don't rock the boat. Um, we have to be good at sport we have to be good at everything and of course no one can fit that box no. and I have had clients who have fit the box but my god the pressure on them to conform continuously at number one is crippling you know so who would you rather be you know number two or number one I'd just and, rather be myself um, to be honest <laughs> exactly and, and you know why do we have to be compartmentalized why do we have to be separated and why can't we have a society where we honor creativity? I mean, look what's happened through COVID. People have had to go out there and they started painting again. They've yeah. started being creative. People have been dancing in the kitchen. People have been dancing <laughs> on Zoom calls. And I just think there's a lot of good that in, in some way, shape or form that's come out of COVID because it's made people go back to basics. And I was talking to friends recently about management. Many managers now, they've no choice but to be aware of mental illness. Mm. And of course, you know, I treat illness of any uh, description. But I think we need to find balance in life, mental, spiritual, physical and emotional, you know, for the body, mind and soul. And I remember one of my clients, well, I say friends, I hate the word clients, years ago, she said, well, do I have a soul? And I was just gobsmacked completely. And I said, darling, if you didn't have a soul, you'd be dead. She said, would I? And I said, yeah. And, you know, a tree has a soul. Animals have a soul. We have a soul, but we're not taught how to take care of it. We're not taught how to listen to it. If anything, you know, we're taught how to discombobulate it and shut it down. So for me, you know, my soul was screaming at me when I left the civil service and I knew I had to do something different. And then, um, you know, the rest of the story, I got chronic fatigue syndrome, ME for nearly 12 months, and that was a big learning curve for me. So I spent every minute of the day when I was awake reading every positive mental attitude and law of attraction book, spiritual awareness, the spiritual laws. Um, and one of the best books I'd recommend to anybody is Heal Your Life by Louise Hay. And she oh, healed wow. herself of cancer. It's, it's a brilliant book. You know, I recommend it to all my students. Um, and it makes you realise, you know, we have to take personal responsibility and it's not about playing the victim. Obviously, she played the victim for a while and then she kind of woke up from that victim mentality. And it's like, no, just because it's always been, you know, SHIT or whatever doesn't mean it always has to be like that. And you can change your life. And that would be my uh, advice to anybody. If you want to change your life enough, you will. If you want to whinge enough, you'll carry on whinging. Yeah. And, you know, if you have victim mentality, law of attraction will give you more of the victim mentality. And if you really want to change and, you know, sometimes it can be just one thing with a client. And I'll just say, well, you know, how much water do you drink? Do you drink tap water, filtered water? What's your diet like? Are you sleeping healthy? You know, it's no good expecting life to change if you don't change definition of stupid is if you always do what you've always done you're always going to get what you've always got it's not rocket science no, but it's it's in a law of attraction or positive mental attitude if you keep whinging about your life and you're doing the same old same old well you know you don't have to be a genius to figure out nothing's going to change you know mm, of course so at what point did you um obviously you, you'd spent like about 12 months when when you was poorly and mm -hmm. these books what was your next step? How did you sort of start to then have that belief in yourself? Because it's one thing to read all the books, hmm. to put it into action. That's a good question. Um, I'm getting good at these questions. <laughs> you are getting good at these questions. <laughs> Mine is a little bit bizarre and I'm just wondering how much to spill. Oh, well, um, do you want the truth or do you want a little one? Absolutely. Oh, okay. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Awesome all. It's, it's, it's not a conventional answer, darling. So... What happened was my back was against the wall because, you know, when you work in the civil service, you get, or at that time we got six months full pay and then six months half pay. So obviously I had the children to support and, you know, roof and mortgage over the head and everything. So the pressure was on, but I knew I couldn't go back to the job. 
And um, one day my spirit guides, call them what you will, you know, uh, guardian angels, I just heard this voice say, put an ad in the paper, in the Lancashire Evening Post for a date. And I'm like, I don't want a man up. No, well, I, I can't be with anybody else in my life. I've got enough on my plate. And it was all that. And they just kept insisting. So, you know, at the time we didn't have internet dating and things like that. So I put this ad in a paper, you know, a little bit about me. And I had one guy that replied. So we went for a drink and we got talking. And I told him I'd been ill. And I told him that I had just trained in Reiki and um, was doing Tai Chi and, and very spiritual that I'd always kind of felt God and known God, not in a religious sense, because not religious in any way, shape or form. Um, I think there's good and bad in all religions. And I think you need to have wisdom and discernment in yourself to figure out what's right for you and what's right for me might not be right for anybody else. So it's not my way or no way. It's about encouraging people to listen to their own soul and their own instinct and intuition and that's a way to empower anybody you know um so I put an ad in the paper met this guy and he said you know what Mary we're not we're not clicking are we and I'm thinking no I can't stand you mm. <laughs> I'm just being honest yeah and I sat in the pub remember I see energy fields and these energy fields was really dark and I'm thinking oh I mean, I <laughs> you, you know so I sat in the pub across from him thinking just get me out of here you know what <laughs> and he said but my ex-girlfriend is really spiritual she has a clinic she works with someone else and do you mind if I pass your number on so he passed my number on never saw him again thank you and um, Look, how good of him to pass your number on though but he did god love him he passed the number on <laughs> and um I got a phone call from a lady and she said, I've got your bookings on Monday for readings and healings in a clinic in Longridge. I mean, this is many moons ago, 2003. And can you start on Monday? Wow. So the self-belief, I think the self-belief was, was kind of developing uh, through the time I was sick with a chronic fatigue. Because I think there'd been a buildup of the anger from moving from, I'm not being a victim to this. I will change my life because I'm sick of what I'm doing. I'm sick yeah. of the treadmill and I need to change and I need to honor, you know, the natural gifts that I have. And I'd loved, I mean, the woman who taught me um, Reiki was, was really so amazing. Um, she wasn't religious in any way, shape or form. I mean, I really honor her. She had studied Buddhism and her and her husband were very, very gentle people, very, very wise people, highly intelligent. And she was just this goddess of compassion, almost like a walking uh, Kuan Yin, really. And there was only humility with her, but a deep, deep wisdom. And, and, and she could, I couldn't have had a better teacher. There's no two ways about that. And she used to pull me up if I sunk back into victim mode, because I think sometimes you know, when you're just in that transition, you can slip back, you know, even if it's only a little bit. Mm. And um, she would give me a kick up the pants, obviously, metaphorically. And she was just an amazing lady and she taught me so much. She introduced me to some beautiful people. Um, the people in the Tai Chi group just welcomed me with open arms because, you know, being so psychic, uh, has isolated me in a lot of ways you know from being younger um and I never felt judged I never felt judged by any of them um I was only welcomed and embraced so I think I think there were a lot of factors in the mix I don't think there was one thing and that's the truth and I think I knew that I couldn't go back to the civil service and obviously the universe I'd read about law of attraction positive mental attitude I'd sent it up there and by this point I'd become aware that now I had to take responsibility for saying, yeah. I can't do this job anymore. I've asked for it. <laughs> I've asked for it. Yeah, exactly. You got it. <laughs> and I got it. Didn't get it in the way that I expected to get it. And I think so many people have that, you know, they don't get what they want in or what they wish for in, in, a, in, a, in the right way or in the way that they expect it. Mm -hmm. And yet, you know, 
in a beautiful way, it can be more exponential to get it. Often we find what we don't want by finding what we do want. But the universe took me on a complete right angle. Um, I started working at the clinic. I'd never even met Claudia. She'd booked everybody in and I said, well, with respect, you book people in, it might be rubbish. She went, oh, no, you're not. Just start on Monday. And, and the whole thing just started from there. And then because um, homeopathy had, had got me right, along with the um, Reiki, um, I decided to train as a homeopath. And then after that, after three years of studying in the lakes, what a beautiful college we had and some wonderful tutors. Um, you know, homeopathy is about getting to know yourself because how can you work with your patients if you don't know yourself? Because yeah. there's a lot of the psychology of the body, you know, why have they got a sore neck? Why have they got breathing problems? If it's the left-hand side of the body or the right-hand side of the body and, and what stress, trauma, shock or, you know, medication, allopathic medication have they been on beforehand? Um, and the results I used to get, you know, as a homeopath, I mean, I was treating some very, very poorly people. That was before I even qualified. Mm -hmm. Um, but I used to love it. I just embraced everything. Um, so I, to be honest, I just feel it's been a journey of, of joy. I've had some challenges. That's the truth. I'm not going to lie to you. I've had some times where I could just think, oh, I'm just going to quit. I've just you know but you go for a walk you shake yourself off you pick yourself up you get back on again yeah. um and obviously more recently you know selling my house letting go of everything and and traveling um and doing the spiritual pilgrimage was absolutely incredible and meeting um Bapamanku in bali who said he'd waited for me for five years to teach me mm -hmm. and you know the healing i was doing with the balinese people with the indonesian people um, sometimes other nationals, you know, English, German and stuff, um, but predominantly the Indonesian people and working with the other high priest in, in the temples, especially for a Western woman, totally unheard of. Um, yeah, I watched um, Eat, Pray, Love. Um, yeah, yeah. Heart. When I was watching it, I was just thinking, I feel like this is the kind of journey that Mary went on. <laughs> Yeah, well, there's another aspect to that, but I might not include it in this video. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think yeah. I've done mine backwards, put it that way. Oh, yeah. nice. Yeah. So you're an author as well. I, I am, and I love How that. many books now? Is it? I have written five books. Five books. Book six is currently on the bedroom floor. <laughs> there's oh, about 25,000 words. So um, I've got three of your books and um, um, I've got two of them with me. Um, mm -hmm. I've got here, The Heart and Soul of Success, yeah, which obviously is a remastered version of your original book, From Stuck Duck to Humming. Mm -hmm. And I've also got The Kingfisher That Rocked. Now both yeah. of these are game changers. And yes, they are. They're, they're, they're absolutely amazing. Um, so I don't know whether you maybe want to, uh, uh, we could be here all day if we spoke about all of them, but should we focus on your latest one? Um, the heart and soul of success. Can you just tell me a bit about that and how you went from, in fact, probably talk about From Suck Duck to Hummingbird and how it came about that you then brought it to life in this book. Okay, so From Stuck Duck to Hummingbird came about because I'd done a lot of workshops and I'd done a lot of studying. Um, obviously, did the homeopathy there's a lot of studying in there um, gone through my own personal journey and I'm still on it I'm still a work in progress um, oh. and you know you realize how much knowledge you've got to share um, in the nicest possible way um, and when you see how you can change people's lives through learning Reiki through you know just one workshop just when you're working with someone on a one-to-one -one and then you kind of explain to them why they've got a block or why they feel stagnant in their life and you listen to them about you know all the negativity um it really is a a, a great um what's the word i'm looking for uh inspiration and i just think well you know i can't reach i suppose we've got um you know internet and everything now and and you know, some YouTube videos obviously do reach a million people or 10 million or, X, you know, more. But essentially for me, I've always loved reading. I've always loved writing. My grandma was an absolutely great advocate for books. I don't think there's anything she didn't know about English literature. Um, but 
I just thought I've got to share this wisdom. You know, there were other people out there who were in a really black, horrible, treacly place like I used to be. Mm -hmm. And if I can do it, that's why, you know, the goldfish that jumped, that was when I changed my life and jumped out of the orthodox kind of goldfish bowl to do what I'm doing now. Mm -hmm. um, and I just think it's, it's just, it, it's just a passion of mine, really. So I started writing from stuck duck to hummingbird because that was how I felt, like I was a stuck duck and I'd become the hummingbird, you know, with the wings to fly and everything. And my friend John, he, he's an author, and John read the book and he said the original book had a, a picture of a duck in the mud on it. And he just gave me a bit of a roast in and said, why have you named that book from Stuck Duck to Hummingbird? Because it's a life manual with every bit of spiritual wisdom in that it can possibly have in there. And he said, you need to rename it and I'll come around and we'll have a chat and we'll discuss you know, what we're going to call it, because I had a limited company called um, The Key to Successful Living, because to me, successful living, you know, we can bang on the chest and say, right, I want to be a multimillionaire, I want to be this, I want to be that. It's not about that. It's about really going inside and, and being happy within. And if, if you've got plenty of money as well, that's fine. And if you've not, that's fine, because you know, how many people really find that deep peace? How many people really find the heart center? How many people live from the heart and, you know, not from the head with the monkey voices, you know, jabbering away all the time. So that's why I changed the title on John's advice and a few other people as well. And um, obviously he did a lot of meditation work around it. Um, and that's how it became the heart and soul of success. So it's not, about how to win the lottery. I mean, great, it would be wonderful if we won the lottery. Um, but it's what you what you do with it, it's how you live your life and your everyday life. But essentially, it's about your own personal journey and what's shaped you, what's made you as you are. You know, I've got, I've been divorced, I've got four children. I have a choice, I can be bitter, resentful, nasty. It, why? Because the only person you hurt is yourself. Um, you know, I'm still really good friends with my ex-husband and we've got eight granddaughters now, you know, we've still got four children. So um, I think when you're disrespectful of someone else to me, and especially now I understand more about past lives and things like that, you actually begin to understand that you actually disrespect aspects of yourself. Absolutely. If you can accept yourself, you can accept others. If you can love yourself genuinely, then you can love other people more. Um, and I think, honestly, Lizzie, the amount of decades, not years, the decades I wasted judging myself, you know, that's the truth. I was my own worst critique. I was so hard on myself. You know, we put ourselves on this um, kind of just high pedestal. I've got to be the best mother. I can never get stressed in front of the kids. You know, I'm not allowed to be ill. I'm not allowed to be, you know, sick. Um, the meals always have to be perfect. The bills always have to be paid. The house always has to be spotless. It's it's unobtainable, and it's it's not um, it's not the right way to live. We just need to do the best every day. And obviously, many of the spiritual teachers will say, you know, we need to be in the present moment. But when you're a mum, you're not in the present moment because you're eating yourself coming backwards. You're tired from the days, the weeks, the months, the years before. And you're just trying to juggle that many balls and inevitably you're going to drop some of them, you know? Um, and then one child says, well, they're favorite and I'm not. And it's like, I'm trying to treat you all the same, <laughs> yeah. you, rest, you know? Um, but when you've no concept of yourself, mm -hmm. uh, when you've no concept of your needs and uh, that, you know, when I allowed myself the time out, when I used to go to Tai Chi for one hour a week on a Thursday night, it was the best thing for me. And even to allow myself to spend the money on the class, I was like, well, you know, the kids need shoes, the kids need this, you know, and yet it was life changing and just giving myself permission to be. No spiritual guru, no spiritual growth will ever come 
from running at 100 miles an hour, you have to create that space. If it means you have to get up 10 or 15 minutes earlier before everybody else when the house is quiet, make that time for meditation. Yeah. No spiritual person will ever come from a place if they don't connect to nature. You know, um, I love going out and getting covered in mud. Not always. Um, <laughs> when, you know, when I'm out walking. Yeah. And... Um, I just love the peace and quiet, you know, on Good Friday, I just took myself off up to Tockles, took my boots off, and my flask of hot chocolate, sat by the river and put my feet in the cold water and then just sat in the sun for well over an hour. And honestly, I was just blissed out, totally blissed out. And it, it took me a lot of years to find that inner peace and that bliss. Yeah, I don't think people actually, um really value how much being outside um can give you um see i get it quite a lot because i take the dogs for for a walk and mm -hmm. we've started to do recently is not just walk them for the sake of the need of walk mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. walking them to enjoy it and mm -hmm. go to a field where there's nobody else around and just like mm -hmm. free and that is my just ultimate favorite place mm -hmm. i just feel so at peace so calm like mm -hmm. if like mm -hmm. don't look at my phone anything it's just me and rich and the dogs out mm -hmm. and, and it's just it it's just the best feeling i love it and mm -hmm. um, so I, I can see what you i can see how i, I mean i've not been up to tockles i need to i need to i need to go no it's absolutely beautiful there's 30 <laughs> acres uh, wow i might i might be wrong it might be 30 or even more than that <laughs> but it's a lot, a lot. It's a lot of fun. <laughs> And it's, it's just beautiful, you know, um, there's a reservoir uh, to the left of us and there's three reservoirs up towards uh, Darwin Tower. And um, if anybody wants to go, I would suggest some good walking boots, you know. Um, there's a cafe at the top. I don't know if it's open with COVID, but, um, you know, take your picnic, do what you want to do. But I just find such absolute peace up there. And obviously you're aware I broke my leg on Boxing Day on the walk. And, um, you know, it's not stopped me. Um, you know, I even went up there on my crutches with my Robocop boot and I loved it. And just the challenge of, you know, I can go a bit further every day and just keep going and keep going, keep going. And I think whatever journey you're on in life, um, you know, if you want to improve yourself, none of us have learned to drive overnight. None of us have learned to cook overnight none of us have learned to ride a bike overnight or play a musical instrument overnight. Some people might be more natural than others, of course, mm -hmm. but everything that, you know, we would see perhaps as a challenge, just keep going at it, keep mastering it. Um, whatever you want to do, it takes dedication, commitment and determination. Um, I spent three years studying, um, you know, the homeopathy, and I was never going to quit, but right up towards the end, um, there was a situation that came up on a, on a personal level and uh, I was just going to walk away and I was obviously talked round. Um, but I think sometimes there's always a guardian angel there as well, you, you know, even if they're in the physical form to give you a nudge to, to help you to keep going. Um, so... I think when we live from the heart and when we do things authentically, um, when we can find our passion within and when we can believe in ourselves, because everything, the common denominator in our lives is ourselves, mm -hmm. you know, and everything in, in its own way revolves around us. So if we believe in ourselves to one degree or another, we're going to succeed eventually. And we might have to, you know, fall down. If you look at any of the talks by Denzel Washington, he'll tell you if you're going to fail, do it in a spectacular way. Absolutely. Because then you've got the motivation to come back up. Yeah. Um, and most people, you know, I've got friends who became multimillionaires, lost it and built it back up again. But, you know, whenever you lose something, you appreciate it more. Just like with the chronic fatigue, I lost my health and then built it back up again. Yeah. And breaking my leg, you know, I was sat with my leg with the incredible pain at the beginning with the Robocop boot. What is the learning from this? Mm -hmm. You know, and our society, um, I mean, look at the fear with COVID. 
you know and of course we know it exists but with 0.03 percent of of fatality which is much less than kind of the fatalities from the cold the flu gastroenteritis um but look at the fear it's created in people and if i'd have lived in fear i'd still be working in the civil service yeah call it a leap of faith you know call it destiny i don't know but i knew i couldn't carry on carrying on um and suicide wasn't an option because I had four children to raise. I mean, joking aside, there was a point where I was suicidal because I just knew I couldn't carry on. But I think sometimes the best thing for us is to reach the bottom. Yeah, well, so, it always up then, isn't it? I think so. And I think, you know, the analogy of the lotus, the lotus comes from the mud. Mm -hmm. And um, I read um, Goldie Horn you know, the actress, Kate yeah. Robinsmore. Goldie Hawn's been a, a, a favourite of mine for many, many years. And I read her autobiography a few years ago, The Lotus Comes From The Mud. And it's, it's beautiful. And she just took that many knocks. And so many people tried to sexually abuse her because obviously she's gorgeous. I mean, it doesn't make it right. But she suffered so much... Uh, abuse in some way shape or form trying to get what she was getting with her career as a dancer and an actress and then luckily she got the break with um private benjamin but she was at the point where she was just going to give up and i think sometimes it's just having that determination to keep going to just push through um and i'm not going to lie it's a tough place to be and and there's been many challenges over the years where it's like you know right you've got to push through this you've got to keep going just keep going just keep going and, you know, I remember the within 24 hours of, of kind of getting on uh, the getting off off the plane rather for, for, at Goa when when I would flown from Manchester and I was sat on Kieran Parney Bridge and I was thinking, what the hell have I done? I've let go of everything. I'm just completely open and so vulnerable. And I could never admit my vulnerabilities years ago. I could never have been vulnerable. Um, and, you know, it's very true. Our strength lies in our vulnerability. Um, obviously, I didn't know Bapa Manku was waiting for me. And that had been the call that had been made on a soul level five years before. Um, a meeting him was wonderful. But, you know, traveling has its challenges. And there were times I wanted to bolt because you're in a strange village, you've been eaten alive by mosquitoes. <laughs> and, you know, you don't know very many people, few people can speak English and you're traveling on your own. It's very lonely. Mm -hmm. So people like to think, oh, you know, it must be wonderful traveling and doing this and that and the other. But actually there was a lot of challenges there. Mm -hmm. And um, sometimes it was very isolating, but you know, there were times when I wanted to bolt from that as well. I obviously stuck, stuck it out and, and did the course. Um, but I think we all have challenges I think if we can be in the moment as much as we can, then we can become aware of how we feel about those challenges and what we're going to do, you know, when we come through the other side and just keep visualising that we are going to get through to the other side. Um, and we just need to listen and be open. And the first person we need to be honest with is ourselves. Mm -hmm. And most people can't be. And obviously in my work, many of my clients can't be honest with themselves. What do you mean I'm not angry? And they're really furious. They don't realise, you know, and depending what they're wearing, you know, sometimes you might see the whole of the skin and the throat and the face go bright red. I'm not angry. And you're thinking, OK, OK, yeah, sweet. You know, and, and that's where the beauty of the healing comes in, because you can just send a positive vibe, a, a peaceful vibe, you know, and just put them in white light or something. But I think if we if we as a nation learn to use anger with wisdom, yeah. I think things could change. And I think so many of the mental health problems now are because people won't honor their anger. They won't honor how they really feel. And I think simply because most people don't know how they feel. Yeah. Well, I didn't. And I think mm -hmm. that's one thing that um, mm -hmm. I learned a lot from, from you is when, um, I remember sitting in, in, in the lounge and mm. we sat in that chair and you were talking to me and I don't remember everything about the conversation. Mm. But I just remember 
the the outcomes of what I realized about myself and mm. even realize I had those thoughts about how mm. I thought like um again I'm not going to go too much into it but I thought my body hated me and mm. Mm. when I think about that now I just think mm. well, I was I was really in a dark place but without mm. realizing I was in a dark place yeah yeah on the outside to everybody else and I think I trained myself to think like I'm always all right because I'm 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 always looking after everybody else and I'll I'll make sure everyone else is all right and as long as they're mm. happy and I'm happy which mm. this is a really big thing about me I really want to make everybody happy if I can mm. but if I can't have that love and happiness inside myself then mm. I can't actually give my all to to everybody else which is no really spent this time over mm. this past like year with especially with covid and as much as it's been it has been a hard year it's not been easy mm. at all mm. it's taught me so much about mm. like looking after myself and i know now that if i don't give myself that time for me mm. then mm -hmm. i'm not actually giving everybody my best version of me absolutely yeah. And so we all need time. yeah yeah so i was just going to ask you like mm. I, 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 I could talk to you all day you know <laughs> <laughs> um but i was just going to ask you if you could give maybe your top tip to anybody that's that's feeling like a stuck duck feeling like somebody that like is in that place where they're really dark and they just think there's no way out what mm. advice could could you give them that might give them a bit of a wisdom to um sort of give them a kick up the arse and shake mm -hmm. them and realize one of the main things is uh, a lot of people don't drink enough water. Mm -hmm. And of course, the body is made of 75, 80% water and the body's producing toxins all the time, metabolism, excretion, respiration. And I've seen clients simply make a change to drink filtered water, not tap water. Um, and that in itself can, can change things. Start altering your mindset. You're going to have to make changes as I said, the definition of stupidity. If you always do what you've always done, you're always going to get what you've always got. I love Tai Chi. Tai Chi, yoga, Qigong, uh, Qigong, you know, it can be termed with different names. It means the same thing. Get your energy moving. You've got balls of chi, which are energy balls, um, around your throat, under your arms, behind your knees, in the perineum. And, you know, if you can get that energy moving, um, do some exercise, get outdoors, get into nature. Don't give into it. Um, if you feel, you know, absolutely desperate, you can use Rescue Remedy or the Jean de Vray's Emergency Essence. Um, you can read a book. You have to decide if you want to change, how much do you want to change? Yeah. Are you in 100% or are you just going to quit? Are you a quitter? I mean, you know, if many times people start the gym in January and then they quit within two or three weeks. Most people, I think it's something like 90% will have quit within the first two or three weeks. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, if we become aware of how much we really want it. So when I'm working with my clients and patients, um, you know, how much do you want to change? Because you've had a series of bad habits. People drink too much coffee, People can become shopaholics, workaholics, gamblers, uh, sex addicts, smokers, drinkers, you name it. There's lots of addictions out there, you know, um, and um, sugar addicts, caffeine addicts, all those things. There's so many ways out from our pain. Mm -hmm. But if your pain becomes great enough, you're going to do something about it. Yeah. Um, read as many spiritual books as you can. Law of Attraction, Positive Mental Attitude. Um, and do some research into the upper limits of happiness. You know, our society is very negative. If you look at um, a lot of the religions, we're just left in this place of pain, guilt, shame, not good enough. Um, you're never going to go to heaven. You know, you're going to go to hell. And we create our own hell down here. Um, and we're very good at it. So we need to create more peace. We need to create more uh, connection and like you say COVID's been a, a, a challenging year for many people so my top five really would be drink more water uh, definitely do some Tai Chi yoga meditation um, start to you know meditate do you even just close your 
eyes and put your hands on your heart center and just do that for 30 seconds mm. because the problem is when we feel like that we're in the head mm. and it's only when we get in the heart you know do some research into the intelligence of the heart and when you start listening to the heart the soul has more volume velocity whatever you want to call it but the soul has more oomph and um the soul will it's such a powerful force when you tune into it you know it can be like a tsunami so get in touch with your soul that doesn't mean you have to go to church it's not that of anything against going to church but get in touch with your soul you can do that sitting by a tree you can do it watching the moon looking up at the moon and the stars going on a beach get yourself where there's negative ions which are the positive ones go and walk by a beach um you know with waves go by a waterfall um so you know get some uh homeopathy uh hypnotherapy go and have a massage reflexology indian head massage there's lots of different kind of it's like all roads lead to rome once you start tuning into the heart and the soul there's no going back um but there's an awful lot you can do you know it can be many people don't realize that tea and coffee can make you really depressed if you drink a lot of it um have a look at your diet you know that can make a huge difference so for me you know it's about bringing that balance mental spiritual physical and emotional body mind and spirit you can't have one without the other you need to take care of yourself as a whole and um you know obviously most people come to me with a physical pain or a bereavement or a shock stress trauma but it's my job to get them to seek and then maintain the balance um and and get them to have the tools in the kit and hopefully the determination to do the spiritual journey thank you for that no thank you thank you for joining me and, and hopefully i'll be able to have a real hug soon i know 